Hey, I'm back once again with a quick update video I figured I might as well make while I'm sitting here doing some, I don't want to call it routine, but some maintenance to my batteries and whatnot. Someone asked me to do a follow-up because it's been over a year since I've been using these batteries to power and run the house. Um, obviously, my MPP LV5048 is here. We've got four kilowatts worth of solar panels on the roof, and we have four 100 amp hour batteries that were built from uh, battery hookups, um, lithium, iron phosphate, small cells in 20p configurations. So, and here there are 16 modules. Each one is a 20p, and it's about 100 amp hours for each one. So each one is about five kilowatts, a little over. And right now I'm doing some basic maintenance. And really, I've had effectively, I would say, no issues. Um, my, most of the issues were caused by me initially because I did not top balance any of these cells upon receiving them and I've been kind of fighting that battle ever since because I don't want to tear apart all the batteries and do all that. Now I've done some workarounds for different things and all that uh, but really what would solve all my problems I have a uh, knee or whatever 4 amp balancer is this I believe. Um, I know there's been some talk about these guys right here but this is Dally's new uh, balancer, active balancer. It's 1 amp um, and I've been using the Dally BMSs, and I haven't had actually, like, as far as I can tell, zero issues. But as you know, the balancing current on these things, or I should say, not current, but balance resistive low, because it only discharges the highest cell and only does so at 20 or 30 milliamps, which is basically useless unless it's perfectly balanced. Uh, what I found is that this balancer uh, actually uses the same leads as the BMS, or identical. So while I have no way to plug them in together at the same time, I can charge the battery up to the max till it cuts off, which I have it set at 3.65 uh, volts. I can then disconnect the battery, plug into the balancer, let it balance out, again, switch back the connections back to the battery, bring the voltage up again, and I know I could do disconnect things and wire around it and do a bunch of stuff. I don't want to do that. What Dally needs to make, and I will grab one of the extra cables, and I'm trying to get them to do this because I would buy three more of these things right now and I'd be done with this. I would have to do nothing. Is This is the same leads that are on the actual uh, BMS. And it's the same that the balancer actually uses. What we need is in my opinion, if you're trying to retrofit and you don't want to tear your whole battery apart like I don't want to, um, I, what we need is we need this connector, uh, right? This is coming out of the balance, current balance. We need to plug it into a Y, so effectively the connector on this, and then split out to two. So I'd have this plugged into an, a plug, and then it would split out to two of these. And then one would go to the balancer, and one would go to the BMS, and you'd be done. And it would be added in literally seconds per battery. Not having to cut any of this, not having to solder any of this stuff, not having to destroy the leads. And I would have to still go buy like another one of these leads for every battery. It doesn't make any sense. What we need is we need this connector. We need to be able to plug into this, the already existing connector, and split to two of these. So one to two, right? And then you could just easily plug in the balancer and plug in the Dally BMS and be done with it and I would buy three more of these right now. Instead I'm doing this stupid workaround which isn't fun. Now some people are going to complain saying that that balancer isn't accurate enough. It's only going to 0 0.02 amps or not sorry 0 0.02 uh, volts um, or, or you know yeah, it's not low enough. Uh, I don't think it matters. So what I've experienced is that if you get the balance anywhere it's correct, it'll correct it up to a point. You're not going to go that far out of balance. So if you balance things with this at 0 0.02 up to like 58 volts, your charging voltage should only be 55.2. That thing should never do much of anything. Um, if it does go a little out of whack, honestly, the BMS could probably handle that at that point. But regardless, it would fix the issues. And I could charge these all the way up high do a, basically what I would call a maintenance maintenance type thing, right? You'd once in a while have it charge all the way up to 58 volts, then you'd only go back to charging, you know, at the 55.2 uh, because a, the battery's full when you hit 55.2. There's not really anything above that. And that would be 
routine maintenance, do that, you know, once a year. So, uh, or once every quarter or whatever, uh, you could put on a schedule and that would be fine, I think. So you'd bring it up, let the bouncer really work hard to get everything equal and then don't run it that high and you're not going to see any significant difference at that lower charging voltage. And you may say, oh, well, the bottom, you're going to lose some. It's like, well, you don't go that low. You're really going into treacherous territory when you're going too high or too low. Things get out of balance no matter how hard you try and they definitely don't stay in balance because there's enough differences in these cells where like, you know, a tenth of an amp hour or a five hundredth of an amp hour is really, really tiny. So um, that's basically my opinion. So if everyone wanted to update, everything's working well. I'll give an update on this balancer, but it's working. This one I've already finished on, worked great. Uh, I finished on this one, seems to have worked great. Working on that one, and that one's the most out of balance out of all of them. So hopefully it... um. It does its job, and I can report back good news. But I'd say for the 40 bucks or 50 bucks that this balancer is on Amazon with free shipping, grab one. I mean, why not? It just doesn't make sense not to add it to pretty much any existing setup if you can do it. So anyway, uh, this guy's been running great. No issues with it. No issues with this setup. It's been great. Um, I don't want to say the ICC has been doing good managing everything. When things are set up correctly, it does a great job. I've had effectively zero issues. Uh, and this earlier this year, we spent a month out of town and let the system just run based upon just pre-setup settings, and it's been absolutely fantastic. Uh, so, at the end of the day, yeah, no complaints. Anyway, if you got any questions, throw them down below. Give me a like and subscribe, and uh, I'll see you guys on a future video. Thanks. Bye.